Hey, what's up, everybody? Today we're learning Daf Nun of Masechta Brachos. Mm, yeah, more on the topic of uh, more on the topic of uh, benching zimun. You know, can you? What's the nusach of the zimun? How exactly do you say it? Uh, can you break up? Can you like leave once you have a chiv in a zimun? What do you do if you eat something and then you realize that you didn't yet make a bracha? Uh, what do you do? Um, these are things that are going to be coming up today. So now that I got you all very excited, let's get started. So we're going to start on Daf Mem Testament Bays all the way at the bottom, right after the Mishnah. So the Mishnah yesterday we were talking about, um, you know, so we said like if you're three people, it says Nivarech. If you're four people, so then you'll have one person say to the other three, Barhu, right? So, so we talked about that. So on that, the Gemara is going. So Amr Shmuel. So all the Mayotzi, all the Masatzmo, Minaklau. Oh. So Shmuel says, you know, even though the Mishnah says that when there's four people, so the Nusach of the Zimun is Barhu instead of Nivarech, uh, Shmuel said, really, it's preferred to say Nivarech even when you're four. Because better to include yourself with everybody else and say, Nivarech, let us bench, rather than Baruchu, and say that you guys should bench. Tanan, we learn in our Mishnah, B'shlo Shavu, Omer Baruchu. But one second, what about our Mishnah that says that when there's four people, you don't say Nivarech, you say Baruchu. So the Gemara says, Ema Af Baruchu, right? Say, no, even Baruchu, right? You could, so Nivarech is really better, but you can say Baruchu. But nonetheless, nivarech, including yourself with everybody else, is better. Dam Ravada Barahava, Ami Beit Rav, because Ravada Barahava said that they say by the Bismedrish of Rav, Tanina, that we have a Mishnah that says, this is going to be Mishnah later on, on our page. Oh no, it isn't. So then where is this Mishnah? Yeah, it says it's later on, on this page, but this doesn't really say that. Okay, this Seder. Actually, it does say that in our Mishnah. Yes, it says that in the Mishnah later on our page. It says, Shisha Nechlak and Arasar, that um, six people can uh, divide up until you get up to ten, right? So if you have six people, they can divide into two groups of, of um, three. So now, Iyamat Bishlamun Nivari Chadif, Mishamachin Nechlakin. So I understand if when you have four people and you have the option between Nivarech or Barhu, so if we say that Nivarech is better than Barhu, so I understand why if you have six people, they could divide into two groups of three. Right, because you you know you're not losing out anything. Meaning, if when you have four people, it's better to say baruchu than to say nivarech, then that means that baruchu is actually you know a preferred way than nivarech. In which case, if you have six and you divide into two groups of three, well then you're missing out the you can no longer say baruchu. You have to say nivarech because you have three. Right, you can only say baruchu when you have four. So um, the fact that we're saying that six people could divide into two groups of three must mean that Baruch Hu is not better than Nivarech. Nivarech is better, and therefore you could divide into two groups of three and say Nivarech. Right? So I understand if you say that Nivarech is better than Baruch Hu, that's why when you have six, you can divide into two groups of three, and the groups of three will say Rabos and Nivarech. But if you say that Baruch Hu is better than Nivarech, well then am I Nechlaken? How come they could divide into two groups of three when they were six so they could say Baruch Hu, right? One guy would say to the rest of them, bless God, right? When there are two groups of three, they can no longer say Baruch Hu, they have to say Nivarech. So from the fact that they can divide into, into um, two, so we see that Nivarech is better than Baruch Hu. We also have a b'risa like this. Bein she'amar Baruch Hu, bein she'amar Nivarech, ein tovsin also al kach. So whether he said Baruch Hu, whether he said Nevarich, it doesn't matter, it's fine. Um, however, those who are very particular, they will say, hey, why didn't you say Nevarich if the person said Baruch Hu? And we say that from a, how a person makes brachas, we could tell if he's a Tamil Chacham or not. Okay, Tzad, what does this mean? So Rabbi Yomer, Uvtuva is a Tamil Chacham. So if you say Uvtuva, so then you're a Tamil Chacham, okay? So most people here say Uvtuva, right? That's what it says in the bench. Uvtuva, Galo Tamil Chasalinu, etc. So Umituva, Harez Abor. But if you say Umituva, then you're an ignoramus. Okay? Amalei Abai, the Rav Dimi. So Abai says to Rav Dimi, Ve'akseb, but don't we have a Pasuk that says, Umi Birkascha Yivorach, Beis Avducha Le'olam? That David HaMelech says, and from your, I think it's David HaMelech, and from your blessings, 
um, the house of your servant shall be blessed forever. So we see umi bir kascha, right? And from your blessings. Meaning the reason why you say, why, the reason why the Gemara said that umi tuvo, um, it, you would be considered an ignoramus because then it sounds like, you know, you're only giving us a little bit. Umi tuvo, from your goodness. Only, you're only giving us a little bit of your goodness, right? Um, so therefore you're an ignoramus. But we see Davana Melech used that lashon of umi bir kascha, and from your brachos, like even from a little bit of your brachos. So the Gemara answer is b'shei l'shani. It's different when you're asking, right? Right. Meaning, if you're asking Hashem for something, like David Melech was asking that God should bless, should bless him. So then you only ask for a little bit. Umi bir kascha from your brachos, only a little bit. However, when you're praising God that He gives us so much goodness, don't just say you only give us a little bit, right? Say uvetuvo and in all of your goodness. I uh, b'shei nami hoksev, but doesn't it also say. With regarding asking God for things, you know, broaden your mouth to ask for whatever you want, and I will fulfill it. So, so, so we see that even when you're asking, you shouldn't just ask for a little bit; you should ask for a lot. So, oh, that's by divrei Torah. When you're asking for divrei Torah, ask God to right that you should be able to learn a lot, a lot of Torah. But uh, when you're asking God to do you a favor and to give you something, I guess physical. So then, um, you know, you, you're only going to ask to just ask God even for just a little bit. Tanya, we learn in a bright story, Rabbi Omer, Bituvo chayinu areze tamun chacham, chayim areze bor. Right? That if a person says that in God's goodness we live, all of us, right, he's including himself with everybody else in the zimun, areze tamun chacham. So he's a tamun chacham, whereas chayim areze bor. If he says, Uktuvo chayim, that in, um, in his goodness there is life, you know, in general, but he's not necessarily saying to us, he's not necessarily including himself in it, so then he's an ignoramus. Now, Ablai uh, actually teaches the opposite, that uh, if he says Chayim, so then it includes like the entire uh, world and not just this little group, right? Chayinu is us, whereas Chayim is the entire world. But, um, rather you should say, Chayinu, and he should include himself in with the rest of the group, great. Um, Rabbi Yochanan, Zakto Rabbi Yochanan, Nevarich Shachanu Mishelo, Ariz Etamun Chacham. If a person says that we will bless um, to he who we ate from him, so then he's a Tamun Chacham. Mishachanu Mishelo, to who we ate from him, Hare Zebor, then he's an ignoramus, because it sounds like, you know, then you're referring to the Balabais, to the person who you ate from. Whereas if you say Nevarich Shachanu Mishelo, it's more, right, um, there, there's only one person, there's only one being who you're eating from, and that is God. But if you say, then it just sounds like it's more local to the person that you're eating at his house. So it says, but what about in the Haggadah on Pesach, when we say that we thank to who, uh, who did uh, all these great miracles for us? So, over there we're saying who? Maybe I'll think that it's the Baal Abayas. So, Amalei, Hasa Mukhucha Milsa, Manav Nisei, Kucha Brichu. So, um, Ravashi answered no. Over there in the Haggadah, it's pretty obvious that who was doing these miracles, like taking us out of Egypt and all the, you know, makos that happened over there and the splitting of the sea. That was obviously God, it wasn't the Baal Abayas. From Rabbi Yochanan, Baruch Shachanu Mishalo, Harei Ze Tamnuchachum, Ala Mazun Shachanu, Harei Ze Bor. So if you say, um, you know, blessed is God who we ate from him, so then he's a Tamil Chacham. If you just say, on the food that we ate, so then he is a, um, ignoramus, in, in ignoramus, okay? Um, fine. Amar of Huna, Bre, Dirav, Yoshua, Lamar and Ella Begimel, Deleka Shem Shemaim. So, that is only, when there are three people, because you're not saying God's names, so then you have to make it clear, right? Baruch Shachanu Mishalo, and not just Baruch Alam Mazen Shachanu, not just thank God for the food, but thank God for well, not just thanks for the food, but thanks for whom the food was His. Then, because that implies God. But once already you're um, saying God's name, right? Avav Asara, but with a minion, Deika Shem Shemaim, so Muchu Chamilsa, then 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 it's clear that you're thanking God because you're saying God's name in the Zimun, right? Nevarich Elokeinu Shachanu Mishalo, Kidetznan, as we learn in the Mishnah. In the same way that he blesses, that is how they respond. 
Baruch Hashem, Eloke Yisrael, Eloke Atzvakos, Yoshev Akuvim, Alamazen Shachanu. Right, so blessed is God, the, the God of Israel, the God of the uh, legions, who sits on the Kuvim for the food that we ate. So in that case, we could say the food that we ate because um, you're already mentioning God's name there, so it's clear that you're talking about God. Whereas if you're not saying God's name, such as if you're only three, so you want to say Nevarech Elokeinu, Nevarech Shachanu Mishalah, not just Nevarech Alamazun Shachanu. Because then it, where did Rashi say that? He said something about um, the Mishachanu Mishalah, Mashmah Shemim, Alamazun Shachanu Vlokatani Mishalah. I don't know. Because then I think it sounds like you're thanking God, not thanking God, then it's about the food or something like that, not about God. Okay, fine. Vaitu, the Gemara says, Echad Achad Asrei, so Echad Asara Ve'echad Asara Rebo. So the, the Mishnah says that whether you have 10 people or whether you have 100,000 people, um, the Nusach of the Zimun is going to remain the same. And then, of course, the Mishnah proceeds to talk about when you have 10, you do this. When you have 100, you do that. When you have 1,000, you do that. When you have 10,000, you do that. Which seems weird because we just said that there's no difference between 10 and 100,000. So, Agufa Kasha. Amar, Echad Asar, Ve'echad Asar Rebo. Amar Kiyadale Ninu makes no sense. On the one end, you said that whether you're 10 or whether you're 100,000, it's going to be the same Nusach. Ve'ada Katani Bameo Omer, Ve'elef Omer, Rebo Omer. And then you start saying, when there's 100, you say this. When there's 1,000, you say that. When there's 10,000, you say that. So, Amar Yosef Lo Kasha. So Yosef says it's no problem, right? When we say that for 10 you do this, for 100 you do that, for 1,000 you do that, that's Rabbi Yosef Aglili. And um, when you say that there's no difference between 10 and 100,000, that is Rabbi Akiva. That's not, as we learn in our Mishnah, Rabbi Yosef Aglili Omer says Rabbi Yosef Aglili, the Firova call him Mivarchin, that based on the size of the crowd, they bless God. Shneemar b'makelos baruch elukim, that in crowds we bless God. And therefore when it's 10 you do one thing, a hundred another, a thousand another. Um, skip the next few words until the, uh, just basically skip this section in, the, in between two dots. Rabbi Akiva, Haikar Rabbi Yosei Aglili, my Avile. What does Rabbi Akiva do with the Pasuk of Rabbi Yosei Aglili, right? Rabbi Yosei Aglili brought a Pasuk, Makelos Baruch Elukim, which means that in different sized crowds, you, breath, you bless God's God differently. So then, what does Rabbi Akiva, who says that it's the same whether you have ten or a hundred or a thousand, um, what does he do with that pasuk? So Rabbi Akiva uses it for the fa- as it's used in the following brisa. Hi Rabbi Meir Omer. Rabbi Meir would say, How do we know that even fetuses inside of their mothers um, said the song on the sea? As Yashir, Shneamar, as the pasuk says, that in crowds you will bless God, Hashem mimakor Yisrael. Hashem from the womb of Israel, from the source of Israel. So that's how we see that even um, um, fetuses inside, inside of their mothers um, said the song on the sea. Ve'idach. And Rabbi Yosei Aglili responds, Mi makor nafka. Yeah, we, we, that, that's learned out from the word makor. I'm learning out the different blessings from makhelot, parhu elokim. Okay, fine. Amar Rava said, Rava, halacha krabi akiva. So Rav said the Lachas like Rabbi Kiva, that there's no difference between 10 and 100 and 1,000 and 10,000 and 100,000. Ravina of Rav Chama Barbuzi iklu leverish gelusa. Kam Rav Chama vikam hadra bimeya. So Ravina and Rav Chama Barbuzi visited the Reish Gelusa. Rav Chama, so Rav Chama Barbuzi got up and he was looking for 100 people so that, you know, if there's 100, then uh, we can, he could say a different nusach, a more mechubad nusach. So I'm like Ravina. Ravina said to Rav Chama, lo tzrichas, Hachi Amarava Allah Rabbi Akiva. Right? So uh, Ravina said to Rav Chama Barbuzi, There's, you really don't need to go look for a hundred people because um, Rav said that Allah Chazak Rabbi Akiva, that it's going to be the same Nusach anyways. Amarava, Kiachlin on Rifta Beresh Gelusa. So Rav says that when we would eat bread by the Reish Gelusa, so Mistamu was like a very big meal, lots of people. So Mavarchin on Gimel Gimel. So we would make little small zimun, so we would finish eating. The Reish Galusa was still eating. Um, and we would make our own little zimuns of three people. Vilivarchu yud yud. How come they would make little zimuns of three? Shouldn't they make zimuns of ten? So that they could say Hashem's name. So Shama Reish Galusa ve'ikbed. If the Reish Galusa would hear 
than making a big minion of a zimun and not waiting for him, so he would get upset. Binifku bevirchasa the reish galusa. Well, then why didn't they just wait for the zimun of the reish galusa, right? So I did the avshu kuleam, the avshu kuleama lo shame, because everyone there is talking and making so much noise, and there's so many people there that they're unable to hear the zimun from the reish galusa. So therefore, they would just kind of quietly make these smaller zimuns of three. Um, but they wouldn't make a zimun of ten because that would be too loud and the Reish Galusa would, would hear and it would be disrespectful. Amar Rabba Tosva says, Rabba Tosva, If you have three people who are eating together, and one of them just decided that he's going to bench on his own and he didn't wait for the other two people. Now the other two people want to make a zimun. Now he says, well, I already benched. So guess what? Inu nafkin bezimun didei, iul onafik bezimun didu. Well, they could still make a zimun and include him in the zimun. They're going to be yotze for having done a zimun. He will not be yotze for having done a zimun because he benched without the zimun. The fisha ain't zimun the mafreya because you can't have a zimun retroactively. So if he benched without a zimun, that's it. He benched without a zimun. Rabbi Shmuel Omer, Raphim by Papa Ikla. Okay, so we said Rabbi Shmuel Omer, right? So Rabbi Shmuel says, um, so Rabbi Akiva said that just like when, you know, when it's 10 people or when it's 100 people, you still say Baruch Hu Hashem. Um, Rabbi Yishmael pointed out that actually the thing would be Baruch Hu Hashem, Es Hashem HaMivorach, which of course many of us probably recognize from Shul. Raphim by Papa Ikla the Kanishta, the Abi Gibor. Oh. So Raphim by Papa was by the Beit Knesset, by the Shul of Abi Gibor. Come, Kara Besifra, and Rabbi Yishmael, uh, no, so Raphim by Papa got up and he read from the Torah. Baruch Hu Hashem, Veishtik. And all he said was Baruch Hu Hashem, he didn't say Baruch Hu Hashem HaMivorach. So everyone said, no, say Baruch Hashem HaMavorach. Why are you just saying Baruch Hashem? Amarava Pasya Uchama Ukama Bade Plukta Lamalach. So Rava said to Rafa my Papa, no uh, black pot, how come you have to um, get yourself involved in a machlokas, right? And as Rashi points out, if you would have said Baruch Hashem HaMavorach, Right, even Rabbi Akiva would, would, would say that that's even preferred, right? And so it covers Rabbi Akiva and also it covers Rabbi Shmuel. So why, why did you specifically do like Rabbi Akiva and not like Rabbi Shmuel? The Od, Hanob, Alma, Rabbi Shmuel. The Minag of the, uh, you know, the Minag Olam, everyone does like Rabbi Shmuel. They say, Baruch was Hashem HaMavorach. So he said to um, Rafim Bar Papa, why, 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 why are you causing a scene over here? Okay, fine. Mishnah, new Mishnah. Shlosha shachlu ke'achas. If you have three people eating together, inan mashan lechalik, they're not allowed to divide up. Ve'chein ibaa, and similarly four can't divide up because then you know if you have three and one or even two and two, right? People are not going to have a zimun. Ve'chein chamisha shisha nechlak and arasara, and similarly five people can't divide up, but six can divide up because then you'll have two groups of three and that's fine. Arasara until you get to ten. Once you have ten. Basara and Nechlak and Ad Shiyu Esrim. Once you have 10, uh, you can't divide up until you get to 20 because um, with 10 people you could say God's name. Once you have 20, then you could divide into two groups of 10 and you'll say God's name in both of them. If you have two groups who are eating in one house, uh, as long as, um, you know, some people from one, from one group can see people from the other group, so then, so then they could join together to make one big zimun. But if they can't see each other, even though they're in the same house, since they can't see each other, they have to make separate zimuns. Now, I think when it comes to like a minion or whatever, you know, if you're like in shul or something, and the min, I don't know, like you're standing, let's say, right outside the door or something, I think as long as you can see them, you, you can, you're considered part of the minion. I don't know if that means if the door is closed, but maybe just if the door is open or something. But I think as long as you can kind of see the minion, you can be considered part of it. But as it says that you don't make a bracha on wine until you put in water, right? Because uh, their water was their wine was very very strong, and this was more of like a concentrate, and they would have to add water to it in order to make it drinkable, or the normal way to drink it. So we so Rabbi Eliezer says that we don't make a bracha on wine until we add water. The Chacham say that you can. Make a brach on wine even when you did not put water into it. 
My Kamash Malon, Tanina. So the Gemara asks, what is the Mishnah saying by, right, it says three people ate together, can't divide up. We already had the first Mishnah of the Perak, right? Tanina Chada Zimna. We taught it once in the Mishnah already. Right, three people ate together, they have a chiv to make a zimun. Of course they can't break up. So this is coming to, so this Mishnah is teaching like Rabbi Abba Amr Shmuel, who said, that three people who sat down to eat together, they didn't even start eating yet, but they sat down to eat together, they are unable to um, break up. They, uh, once they already sat down to eat together, they were, I don't know, they, 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 they can't separate, they have to eat together, bench, and that's that. Skip uh, the next line, as the Gosa Bach tells you to skip it, and just go to where it says, Inami, two lines from the bottom of the page. Inami, kiadurab huna de amar of huna, gimel shabo, mi gimel chaburos, enan rasha in lechalik. Or else it's like Rav Huna said, which is that if you had um, three people, so let's say you had like three groups, and each group had four people in it, right? And then three people separated from each one of those groups and made their own group of three, okay? So that new group of three is unable to uh, divide up. So Rav Chizda says that that's specifically when they come from three groups, that in each group there were at least three people there, so they had a chiyuv already to make a zimun, so when they come together in this new group, they have a chiyuv still to make a zimun, and they don't um, divide up. And Rav says that also this is only as long as they had not yet been included in the zimun in their previous group. Um, uh, however, if the it, when they were in their original groups, they were already included in a zimun, so then they have no longer a chiyuv for a zimun. They already made a zimun. So when they come together in this new group, um, they, 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 you know, they don't have a zimun. Amarava, mina aminala. Rava says, uh, how can I, you know, where do I get this theory from? It's not as we learn in the Mishnah, um, from Kalim. Mita shenigneva chetzia. If you have a bed and that bed was tame, okay? But then somebody stole half of the bed. So now all you have is half a bed and it's not really functional as a bed. Or somehow half the bed got lost. How do you lose half of a bed? Or brothers like divided it in half. I don't know why they would divide it in half. What are you going to do with half a bed? Or partners. So now it's Torah because it's unused. It's, it's tar, it's, non, it's unusable as a bed. And you know if you break a kli, so it loses its tumma. If they then bring it back together, Mikabel is tumma. Mikanu um, lahaba, then it will once again be able to contract tuma from now and going forward. Mikanu lahaba in the mafrelo, that from now and going forward it can contract tuma, but whatever tuma that it had beforehand um, went away when um, you when the um, bed was cut in half, and when it comes back together once again, the tuma does not the tuma, the tuma that was there before does not come back. It will only be able to contract tuma from here and onward. So. The Gemara says, Alma kevan de palgua parach la tuma mina. So since they cut the bed in half, the tuma went away from it, and when they reconstructed the bed, the tuma did not come back, did not return. So achinami kevan de azmin alayu parach zimun minayu. Once um, the uh, once the people in the original groups included these people in their zimun, so they no longer have a chiyuv zimun, and even when these people then leave their original groups and create a new and form a new group. Um, they don't, you know, the, the chiyuv of Azima doesn't come, doesn't return to them. Okay. Beis chaburos v'chuleinu. So the Mishnah said that if you have two groups that are in the house, and um, so if they could see each other, they can make one big zimun. If they can't see each other, so then they make separate zimuns. Says the Gemara, Tana im yesh shamish b'neim shamish mitzayfan. The Gemara says that if there is a waiter that is waiting upon both groups, well then that waiter will serve to kind of join them together and they can make a zimun one big zimun. Ein mevarchen ala yayin. The Mishnah said that according to the Ezer, you don't make a bracha on wine um, in, until it is, unless it is diluted with water. The Chacham said you can make a bracha on wine um, even when it has not yet been diluted with water. Tan Rabban and the Rabbis taught yayin. Atshilun asan the socha mayim. Ein mevarchen ala brepriya gafen, ala brepriya eitz. Okay? So the Brisa says that 
wine that you have not yet added water to, you don't say boy pre on it. Rather, you say boy pre eight because it's just considered like grape juice, right? It's just considered like juice that came from the grape, and um, that's boy pre eight. And you can even wash your, <coughs> wash your hands with it because it's just considered may peros. It's not wine. You can't wash your hands with wine, but you can wash your hands with um, grape juice, I guess. Mishanas and the Sochamayim, however, once you put in water, then it becomes wine. Mavarchan Allah, Bray Priyagafen, Bay Nod Limimenu the Adaim, Tiferb the Ezer. Right, once you add water, then you say Bray Priyagafen on it, and you can no longer use it to wash your hands. That is Rabbi Ezer's opinion. Okay? The Chacham Momim, Ben Kachu Ben Kach, Mavarchan Allah, Bray Priyagafen. The Chacham and the Chacham say, no, even if you haven't yet added water to it, um, still, you would say Bray Priyagafen on it, Bay Nod Limimenu the Adaim, and you would not use it for Nitila Sadaim. Okay? Kiman Azla Had Amr Shmuel. So now, who does the following statement of Shmuel go like? Does it go like Rabbi Lezer or does it go like the Chachamim? What does Shmuel say? Also, Adam Kotzach of the Pas. A person can do whatever he wants with bread. You don't have to worry about Bizoy Ochlin, about ruining food. So, who does it go like? Rabbi Lezer. It goes like Rabbi Lezer who says that you're allowed to wash your hands with undiluted wine. So, even though it's juice, we, uh, he seems to not be concerned with, um, you know, ruining the juice. Okay, so that's like um, Shmuel, who says that you can do whatever you want with bread, even if it gets ruined. So Abiyos Rabchinina says that the Chacham, nonetheless, admit to Rabbi Yezer that when it comes to a kosh bracha, right? Let's say, like, under the chuppah at a wedding, they're going to make a bracha on a glass of wine, right? So, for that, you would, um, you would make sure that it's diluted for a, for, for a, um, kos shel bracha. My time, how come? I'm Rav Oshaya, but in a mitzvah mina muvchar. Rav Oshaya says, because when it comes to kos shel bracha, we want to do the mitzvah as, as great as possible. And therefore, um, you're going to make sure it's diluted for that, even according to Rabbanon. Rabbanon lemai chazi. So the Rabbanon would say that undiluted wine, you could make, uh, a bari piyagafen on it. So what's it fit for? Like, why would you make a bread priyagafen? Like, who's going to drink? You don't drink undiluted wine. It's too strong. So why would you be saying bread priyagafen? So Rebzeira, chazi lekoraite. Rebzeira said it could be uh, used as some kind of like medicine almost, like a syrup, right? Maybe somebody has like a cough or something like that. So you can use undiluted wine as some kind of a medicine. So because it has does have a purpose, um, even though people don't drink it when it is undiluted, you would... Um, um, Still say bread pegafen since it's possible to use it for um, in a certain context, which is as this kind of medicine. Interesting. Taner Abanan, the rabbis taught. Dal dvarim nemu bepas. There are four things that are said about bread. Imanichin basar chay alapas. We don't put raw meat on bread, probably because once the raw meat has been on the bread, you might not want to eat it anymore. Vein ma'avir and kos male alapas. You don't pass a full cup over bread because if it spills on the bread, it can ruin the bread. We don't throw bread. We don't use bread as a trivet. So Amemar and Marzutra and Ravashi were eating together. And they brought in front of them dates and pomegranates. So, so Rashi defines distant as like meat, but I don't know what meat would have anything to do here because we're talking about dates and pomegranates. The safaria just seems to, safaria translated just says like, um, that Marzutra just, um, threw in front of Ravashi like one of the fruits, either the pomegranates or the dates. So, So, Ravashi said to Marzutra, don't, don't you hold of that we learned in, of that which we learned in Ebraisa that we don't throw food? So, Marzutra answered, Ahi bepas tanya. No, that's specifically bread. Ve'atanya, Rabbi Ravashi said, Yeah, but don't we have a brisa that says, Kishem she'en zorkin es ha'pas, kach en zorkin es ha'ochlin, that just like we don't throw bread, we also don't throw other fruits, so why are you throwing this fruit? So, Amalei, so Marzutra answered, Ve'atanya, af al pi she'en zorkin es ha'pas, af al zorkin es ha'ochlin. Okay. So, so Marzutra said, What do you mean? I thought we have a brisa that says, even though we write, um, um, you know, even though we don't throw bread, we do throw other food. So el lokasha habimidi de mamis habimidi de lomamis. So the answer is, it actually depends. If it's something that by throwing it, the thing will get ruined, right? Let's say some kind of like a soft kind of fruit that if you throw it, you know, it can get all mushy and messed up and 
it'll get ruined, so then don't throw it. If it's something that'll hold its form, and you can chuck it to somebody, and it'll be fine, so then that's okay. Tanur Rabbanan, the Rabbis Tov, Mamshichen, Yayin B'Tzinoros L'Fnei Chosim L'Fnei Kala. Okay? Apparently, I guess at weddings, there was like a very fancy thing where they would somehow, I don't know, send wine through pipes or something, and I guess that was really cool. Vizarkin L'Fnei Klaus V'Gozim, and you could throw in front of them um, these like roasted uh, grain kernels and nuts, but that's only be Mosacham, only in the summer because it's not rainy and it's not, you know, muddy out. Avalobi Mosacham, but in the winter when it's rainy and muddy and, you know, these nuts and stuff are going to basically get ruined, so then don't do it. And uh, somebody pointed out, I think maybe it was Rashi, that even, um, you know, even with this wine in these pipes things, like they, they would catch the wine, they wouldn't just let it, um, you know, land on the floor and get ruined. Aval, okay. But rolls of bread, they would not throw. Interesting that they had this. Interesting out that they would throw all this food at like weddings. But okay, but they wouldn't throw bread because um, you don't throw bread, it will get ruined. Fine. Amar Yehuda, Zakta Rav Yehuda, Shachach Vichnis Oklan L'Soch Piv Below Bracha. What happens if a person put food in his mouth and he didn't make a bracha? And then he realizes like, oh, I didn't make a bracha. So what does he do? So Rav Yudah says, So just move it over to the side of your mouth and then make the bracha. One second. We have one verse that says that in this case, if you put food in your mouth and you didn't make a bracha, just swallow it. We have another verse that says that you should spit it out. We have another verse that says just move it to the side of your mouth. When it says that you swallow it, that's talking about liquids because you can't, if you spit it out, you'll ruin it. And if you try to make a bracha while you have liquids in your mouth, it'll just leak out of your mouth. So then you swallow it. But the tiny polton, when it says spit it out, the midi de lomamis, that is something that won't get disgusting by spitting it out. But the tiny masalkam, the midi de mamis, when we say that you should move it to the side of your mouth, that is with something that um, will be disgusting if you spit it out. So then just move it to the side of your mouth and make a bracha. The midi de lomamis, nami le salkinu le tzarechad, vilivarech. And so the Gemara asks, well, even something that won't get ruined by spitting it out, like, still, why don't you just move it to the side of your mouth and make a bracha? Like, spitting it out, even if it won't get ruined, it's still, like, a little gross. So the Gemara answers, Tegmar Rav Yitzchak Kaskasa, Kamid Rav Yossi Bar Oven, Mishmed Rav Yochanan, Mishim Shinema Yimale Pi Tila Secha. That the Pasek says that my mouth will be filled with your praise, and therefore, as much as possible, we would like to fill our mouths with praise. So if we have food in our mouth, that we could spit out without ruining it, so we may as well do that so that we could um, praise God with a full, with a, with a mouth full of prayer and not with food in there. All right, friends, there you have it. Dafnun, Mesech de Brachos. What did we learn? Uh, we learned about, um, you know, if you could break up uh, a zimun, what exactly is the nusach of, of zimun, what's some of the nusach of benching, Um yeah, we just learned at the end, what do you do if you um, put food in your mouth without making a bracha? And uh, yeah, that was that. Cool page. Catch y'all tomorrow. And peace.